So we should look at uh, the neighbor more closely. Right, so this is the exploration to the west region and they actually found out like uh, lowland and some other different countries and cities. Uh, then they had uh, troops going out to attack Xiongnu and uh, troops going down in the south to attack Nanyue and also Korea. So this is a time when a lot of things are happening and China was in a state of expansion. Now let's look at uh, Xiongnu. Xiongnu is a really famous uh, northern nomad that was a big threat to the central kingdom. Uh, it is said they started with this person, Mo Du Chan Yu. Chan Yu is the title of uh, the leader of Xiongnu. And he was a uh, hostage, so to say. Uh, so he lives in a neighboring country. Then his father decided to attack that country. But he's the hostage, he might be killed. After this incident, he got out, but he really hated his father. So he started, uh, he, he went back to the, to the area, he started to raise his own force. The Xiongnu has a kind of tool called uh, Ming Di. It's a kind of arrow. The arrowhead has an opening, so it's uh, technically a whistle. So when the arrow goes out, it goes psh. So that is a signal to the troops, so everyone will shoot in the same direction. This is the special arrow, the whistle arrow for the leader. So he started to use this. So he started to collect people who will follow him. And one day, he put his horse there, and he shot at the horse. And people hesitated, like, really? This is your favorite horse. Like, how important is it a horse would be, a good horse would be to the nomad? They're always riding a horse. So some people hesitated, they didn't shoot. Then he killed those people who hesitated. That was a message. When I decide to kill my horse, you have to follow this. Then, after a while, he was leading the same people running around, and sh he shot at his wife. And people started to blindly follow his order. So he knew he was ready. So he went near to where his father is, and he shot at his father, and all his followers were shooting towards the same direction, and his father was killed. He became the leader of the clan, and he basically unified the nomads around that area. So they became really strong, and they became a big problem for the central kingdom. In the north, basically, they have the sheep and horses. They always go to where there is grass, and when the winter comes, it gets really cold, and now they have problems. They don't have enough resources. What they do is they go south and rob the people in the south. So, you know, their, their pattern of behavior is kind of like the Viking pirates. You're just doing your own farming there, doing your own business. Sometime they will show up and rob your belonging and burn your houses. This is why they needed the Great War, so they wouldn't come through easily. In Shiji and Han Shu, there is a record of how the Han people see uh, or saw those people, right? So, so this is the impression they had for Xiongnu. Zhu Sui Chao, Xi Se Lie, Wang Junchen, uh, Wang Junchen, Lue Huan Huan, Qi Tu Wu Yuan. Uh, seeking water and grass, used to shooting and hunting. They have no concept of lord and subjects or marriage. They're just riding around with no wars. Chi Tu Wu means riding around and there's no war. They have no buildings. And uh, this understanding is like roughly what people understood about them. They say they have no uh, uh, idea of lord and subject because of course the, the structure is not as stable as the southern people. You know, the lord can be challenged, they can be killed, and the stronger one will take the lead. 
And they also have a different uh, convention for marriage, which is considered weird. Uh, so later on, a different solution, other than war, was given. He Qing, this is using marriage to make peace. So they sent this girl, Wang Zhaojun, to be married to the leader of the Xiongnu. At that time, it was uh, Hu Hanye, the Chan Yu. Uh, he was already kind of old. He asked for a wife from the south. So the government was saying, mm, OK, we, we should send someone to, uh, to be married to the leader of the Xiongnu. They had this announcement. Wang Zhaojun took the paper and said, I volunteer, I will go north, married to the king of the Xiongnu. Uh, she was a servant in the palace uh, in Hougong, so the rear palace. So this is a place where potentially the emperor can choose his concubines. Well, she was there and uh, she was never noticed. She said, I'm going to go north. I'm going to make this happen. So she was adopted as the daughter of the emperor, at least by name. Right? They say, this is the daughter of the emperor, and she's going to be married to the king of Xiongnu. She went there. It's only after two years, the, the leader of uh, the Xiongnu, Hu Hanye Chan Yu, died. He was already very old. And then uh, she sent a letter back to the palace. It was already the next emperor in the Han Dynasty. She said, my husband died. I asked, I asked to return south to my home. What's happening there is actually uh, they have this different convention. If the husband dies, all the concubines will then be passed on to his, his, his brother or his son. So, of course, he, then his son becomes, if he's powerful enough, his son will become the new leader of the clan. And also he will take over all the belongings of the father, including the wives. Of course, not his own mother, that doesn't make sense, but women are passed on to the family of the husband as property. This is how they deal with this in the north in, in that time, because you know, there were really few people, really few resources. This is how their family works. And this is really shocking to the southern people in, in, in Han Dynasty. Like, are you crazy? You're going to marry the wife to the next generation? But the emperor said, let's, let's keep peace. He wrote back and said, Zhao Jun, follow the convention of the nomad. Marry the next husband. So she stayed there. And later on, you know, of course, she had daughters uh, and, and son. Later on, she became influential in the society of the nomad. Uh, so uh, later on, there was a historian who wrote a uh, uh, poet about this. Uh, the, the, the poem says, Han Wu Xiong Tu Zai Shi Pian, Chang Cheng Wan Li, Bian Feng Yan, which means the uh, earlier emperor, Han Wu Di. He was always doing war. He wanted to conquer Xiongnu. So it was recorded all over history. He had this ambition to conquer. But that means all along the Great War, it was the beacon fire. It was battling going on, always. That was too costly. Now how about, it's actually better to just have the music of pipa, which is the instrument she's holding. How about that we send music over there and we will never hear the sound of the whistle arrow for the next 50 years. Uh, by the way, she is often uh, drawn with this pipa, but in the Han Dynasty, the instrument referred to as pipa didn't look like this. We can maybe talk about this when we talk about instruments. Uh, but this is uh, Xiongnu. Uh, this is the really important neighbor of China in the Han Dynasty. 
uh, they threatened uh, the empire a lot. Uh, it is said that these are probably the uh, same people as Hans who went to Europe and uh, indirectly led to the collapse of the Western uh, Roman Empire. Uh, this was proposed uh, first by a French scholar and later by a German scholar, if I remember correctly, but this is only suspected. Uh, you know, the last record in China when they said the major force of Xiongnu disappeared, maybe they moved away. Uh, there was a 400 year blank. There was no record until Hans showed up in Europe. It's not certain if they are really the same group of people or if, if those are actually the descendants of Xiongnu in China. But they were really powerful and influential. They shaped history of China. Later on, there will be Xiongnu also in later period. They actually um, was uh, one of the leading forces in the period called Wu Hu Luan Hua. So they later on mixed with Han Chinese. Later there is the Eastern Han period. So Han dynasty was interrupted by Xing Mang. There was an emperor which is not from the Liu family. He established himself uh, as the new government. And after the disruption, the empire uh, took the capital, moved to the east. Uh, this is called then the Eastern Han. And therefore, the earlier period is referred to as the Western Han because the capital is on the west side. This is a period uh, where you see Buddhism started to come into China. They had this Bai uh, Ma Si, the temple of white horse. By now, you already know how important uh, or how much uh, uh, white horse means to Han Chinese people. They're talking about white horses all the way. And uh, it was really a long time that there was the competition of the queen's family with Huan Guan, the officers inside the palace. Long competition, they tried to uh, bring the emperor closer to them. The two sides are always trying to control the emperor. And uh, Cai Lun made papers. Later on, there was uh, the rebellion of the, uh, the yellow term, uh, turbine uh, and the incident of Shi Chang Shi, which later on led to the period known as the Three Kingdoms. This is probably the most famous period uh, of Chinese history to uh, foreigners. We will continue with the Eastern Han uh, Dynasty next time. Uh, I will ask everyone now to stand up. Okay, 下课。